let's speak about um, the explanation of INEC vis-a-vis -vis also what the EU had said. Um, and, I mean, you watched the edition of the program. Uh, mm. And the Labour Party has been itching to react to that uh, conversation about what uh, Mr. Fessel Sokoye said. What are your, the reactions in the, within the Labour Party about this? I'll say this. Since uh, Mr. Okoye's vituperations on your show, I have not sat in any collective of the Labour Party, but I will speak as a Nigerian, of course, one who worked within the Labour Party conclave and who has had occasion, of course, to, have, to speak with one or two persons. I wasn't in any way, shape or form surprised by Mr. Festus Okoye's vituperations in your Timbers, Would you call it vituperations? They are vituperations yeah, because they have... His own explanation No, or? they are vituperations. Vituperations are essentially outflows that do not flow from common sense. And that is what the gentleman did in your chambers here. Let me be very clear. INEC is a public body established by law, bound to work according to the law. It advertised its guidelines. It told the world what the guidelines were going to be. The taste of the pudding is in the eating. The reality is that for a long time, the electoral processes had been abandoned by Nigerians because they lack trust and confidence in the process. So the advertisement of beavers, the IRF and everything, they were quite vociferous in explaining to Nigerians and reassuring us of what would happen with the system. To now have Mr. Festus Okoye sit down here and open his mouth, there must be a disconnect between the mouth and the brain box for him to offer anything short of an apology, unreserved one to Nigerians, for the utter failure to pretend it by high neck. Let me say this. In a sane environment where people are still governed by reason, the likes of Mr. Festus Okoye should either have resigned or be somewhere writing his statements, explaining to Nigerians what happened. Glitch. The question is that glitch. Is it a glitch in human brain, a glitch in the technical systems, or a glitch occasioned by the complete shutdown of human conscience? So when the person now comes here and he sits down, and he begins to offer explanations at variance with common sense, as has been attested to by anybody who observed this election or was here in this country. All the evidences are very clear, and it shows very clearly that everything that should work on that day worked except INEC. The integrity of INEC as an institution went on exile. So if a person who is now purporting to speak on behalf of such an organization is so lacking in shame that he will sit down here and he, even things that shouldn't issue forth. For, I'm, I'm no longer practicing and I'm restrained in speaking to the case that is before All the right. court. So, let, let, I mean, uh, I, I like us to stay away from the personality of no, Mr. No, it's not about personality. So that we can it's just say about... No, let's say on the issue. And I'd like to take you on, on some of the things. He, he said to us that that is the explanation of the commission, that the commission within its capacity did its best. And... Let's look at it first and foremost. One of the things I had promised was the beavers. So the question is, do you think that the beavers worked? Everything worked except INEC. Okay, so when you say everything worked except, except INEC, yes. what exactly do you mean by okay. that? Okay. I wasn't just speaking to the election. I participated. I was at the polling unit as designated. The beavers machine worked as much as it was allowed to work by human machinations. Because at my own polling booth, the first said, oh, some alphabets were not working, so they couldn't accredit those on time. We later realized that it was designed to frustrate some people into leaving. But people were determined to vote, so they waited. Eventually, in my place, they allowed the beavers machine to accredit those they had earlier left out. Voting did not end in my polling unit until about 8.40 something in the evening. And they did not finish counting until about 1.42 or 1.43. A.M.? A.M. That's the following day? Yes. Was it, is this isolated in your area? I'm or was this what it was common around where, where you, you had friends or, or, me, or what your party, for example? Be, it would be unfair 
to everybody concerned, including myself, for me to speak to what is outside my direct knowledge and participation. I am speaking to what I saw. How many of those incidents you might find all over the country will be left to observers to say or speak to? But on the day in question, everything worked in my own space until it came to where I upload. And then they could upload House of Reps, they could upload Senate, but the presidential election result was not amenable to upload. To your mind, what do you think went wrong? It is very clear what went wrong. I neck deliberately, and I say this without any equivocation and with all sense of responsibility, I neck deliberately sabotaged the electoral process because it was working to a predetermined, obnoxious, and nauseous conclusion. It's not about the system failing. It's about human beings electing on their own to sabotage a system. This is, if I so, switch off the TV screen behind you, it goes off. If well, it, it requires my intervention to go off. If you look at the 2015 election, I don't know if you participated, and you jump into 2019 and then 2023, if you look at those three last elections, uh, how would you describe the development and the progress of our electoral process? Let me put it this way. What INEC has done is that it has more or less placed our democracy. I wasn't always convinced as to the truthfulness of that exercise anyway, but what they have done essentially is to remove the place of the citizens, the place of the voters from the electoral process. It simply means that any two-bit person that is assigned to the office of the, electoral, uh, the, uh, the chairman of INEC can do exactly what the resident commissioner in Adamawa did and unilaterally on his own, following the example of Yakubu, declare anybody he cares to declare and say, go to court. So if you're looking at the 2015 election, the 2019 election, all I can tell you is that the 2023 election is the bottom part of Nigerian electoral malfeasance. Everything that was ever wrong in elections came to the fore in 2023, essentially because Yakubu lost his sense of shame. So when you are personalizing it... Uh, it's not personalizing. It, I'm know, sorry, Shame, I need to clear this. Yeah, because you are mentioning... I have his to name, mention and it. And it's just one person in that country. He is the head. So what would you the like head him is to... rotting. You think he is, he is, he is, he is uh, the to head. blame? No. What blame is you institutional blame. Okay. The blame is for the entire institution. I dealt with INEC in Lagos on behalf of the OB campaign. It was my brief to pick up the, electoral, the election material for the petition. I know the level of stonewalling, and I made sure to write officially at the time to let them know. I know the amount of stonewalling, deliberate stonewalling and delays that we encountered from the wreck in Lagos, and everybody concerned with giving us electoral material that we had paid for. We had to bring copier from outside, from Rank Xerox, to come to INEC, to come and make photocopies. It was that bad. They stonewalled us every step of the way. So if I'm saying Yakubu, I'm only speaking about Yakubu as a type, not as a person. He is a type, but he is the one who sits at the head of the organization. So you, you think the 2023 outing of INEC... Is the INEC worst ever. So, but how then do you, you, you think the election was uh, rigged or was manipulated, or how would you describe it? Put it this way. If we're speaking to the participation of Nigerians, their involvement in the process, you cannot fault Nigerians. Across the political divides, we might have our differences, we, have, we had our arguments, but the beauty of democracy is that when you vote and somebody emerges in a clear and credible process. You applaud, and then you go away, you go prepare for the next election, expecting and hoping that you'll be able to persuade the people by showing how bad the policies of the people who have won might have been, so that they will vote for you the next time. Mm -hmm. But in a situation where you see the level of brigandage that were evidenced, especially on March 18, not just the 25th now, the level of violence, intimidation, complete takeover of the city space, 
Mm. By criminal elements, the, ably abetted by agents were, of state. These are outside of the prime, uh, the, 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 the roles of INEC, isn't it? Let me put it this way. If INEC, as an institution, is examined, and then you look outside, you, look, you don't look beyond INEC, you'll first of all be having a distorted picture. Is a system. INEC is only a part of that system. The judiciary is a part of that system. The police is a part of that system. It's a systemic failure. But we are dealing specifically with INEC. And that's why you may, and as you have pointed out, say, okay, what, what about INEC? Mm. Point is, INEC it was the principal failure mm. on the day. Every so, other one was tangential. Mr. Farouk, you yes, look sir. at it. Your party, the Labour Party, has presently about 34 seats in the House of Reps. If you say the process is flawed, how did you achieve that? I'll tell you. If you recall, when I was explaining what happened on the day, I said when it came to uploading the House of Reps, it worked okay. Right? When it came to uploading the House of uh, to the, the Senate. Senate, it worked all right. But the presidential election upload was deliberately sabotaged. That was, those were my words. Mm. So that does not in any way, shape, or form, contradict the position. So you look at it again and say, uh, IREV is what you see as a major problem. Promise made by INEC? No, 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 See, uh, what, I, what, 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 in what sense? Because the upload of result is about the IREV. No. Which INEC itself, they said they had a glitch. The glitch is <laughs> what was difficult to explain right here. Look. Whether it was, it was human glitch or a mechanical glitch, it was a difficult one to explain. So, the Americans have this funny thing they say. They say, if it waddles like a dog, if it quacks like a dog, it's most likely a, a dog. You tell me you have a technical glitch. I'm, I'm something of a luddite. I can practically, I can hardly find my way around my phone. But I do know that if I have a glitch of any sort, there are digital footprints that any techie person would be able to, to analyze mm -hmm. and tell to the world exactly what the case might have been. So the question I'd like to ask you is that if uploading is what really worried it and the not process... uploading that worries me. So mm -hmm. I, I'm asking, uh, from the evidence that you have, because there are copies of the result at every polling unit, yeah. what are you learning about what you have on your hands what? manually aside what is supposed to be technically uploaded or transmitted. What we know as a fact is that Yakubu cannot rationally explain to anybody in the world how he arrived at the result that he announced. Because what we have is at variance with what they are even busy uploading in most cases. Even though they have not even finished uploading up until today. And yet, a winner was declared by INEC. So you think the original result and what we have is far no, apart? No, no, no. The, 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 the integrity of that election has been undermined and compromised beyond, beyond, almost beyond repair by INEC because what it is uploading on its portal, what individuals took away as from EC8A, the agents, they are, they are not consistent. All right. So... I would like us to anchor on this point. When you hear Mr. Peter Obi say, I'm not asking uh, that he's more bothered about the process. Yeah. Uh, is it that he's lost hope in winning at the tribunal? Or what exactly no, does no, this no, no. mean? I think there is or a what is a mean? What is a way forward from this point? Thank you. There is a misunderstanding when Mr. Obi says that, and I would explain. When he says that he's focused on the process, what he's explaining is that the process itself, if it is flawed, fundamentally flawed, open to manipulation, not transparent, what it has produced cannot be said to be good. So let's deal with that process, look at how it has affected the outcome. If the process is deemed to be bad, the product is obviously not going to be acceptable. It is our belief that if the judiciary is indeed the last hope of the common man, if it is not to capitulate and ensure the death of this democracy, 
then it must look at the process that has produced the incongruent situation that we have found ourselves in today, and then tell us, is this normal? Is this as it should be? Is this the precedence right. we want to set for elections in our country? That is up to the judiciary.